Hey, how's it going, everyone? So today we're going to be reacting to I produce so much nuclear waste, the world is ruined forever. Satisfactory gameplay by Let's Game It Out. Go ahead and get into it. Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. Oh my god, it's time for more Satisfactory. Oh, how I missed you, Factory, with no rules, limits, or logic. Satisfactory is a game about making efficient machines. Or in my case, just find new and inventive ways to torture the game. First, we built a factory that was actually kinda normal. Until I realized you could make it look like this. And then I made it look like this. And I realized the frame rate gets worse, which excites me. And then we tested those limits by building a tornado out of conveyor belts. And it's actually kinda pretty. Just don't look directly at it, unless you like slideshows. Then then I saw this empty valley and I thought, you know what this could use? A conveyor belt weave. Not to be outbeaten, we went back <laughs> over to Belt NATO here and turned it into a full-fledged cocoon. After that, we moved on to other interests, like messing with these trucks here, only to realize that if you throw them all in a pit like this, they become sentient and try to escape. And I thought we might be done. And then those crazy developers just kept updating the game, so I kept trying out their new stuff. Like this beautiful train station that you can even custom name. And boy did I custom name it. That's when I realized we could send them through the earth and straight to hell. And then at the tail end of the last episode, we realized one last thing left to do. Nuclear, nuclear power. power. Oh, and also, today's video is sponsored by NordVPN, but I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Oh, and before we head to our first destination, check this out. The game actually runs better now, and this blows my mind. My god, the performance increase is amazing. This thing doesn't destroy my I computer see, uh, anymore. Like, I can run up to it? Thing. I can bask in its majesty? It is a brave new world. So what are we gonna do today? Play around with nuclear power, of course. Not. We built this guy at the end of last episode, and our first step to nuclear victory is we need to go mine some uranium and shove it into this thing. Last episode, we used our little locator guide here to find uranium, which was a little ways away. But the bigger hurdle is this stuff will kill you if you get too close to it, and that's why we brought this lovely thing. A hazmat suit. Strap it on, makes you look super cool. Now we're ready to go face the elements. You know what? Let's do it with style in our I'm beautiful, sexy car. Now I feel like I took for. a wrong turn somewhere, but I'm gonna have faith that this is the right way. Well, everything is green. I feel like that's sort of a good sign. I think we're going to the right place. Yep, we definitely too, are. I see little bits I'm of ore sure here. Oh, hello, oh. cat friends. These Bell are supposed voice. to be spiders oh, in the God. game, but for everybody's benefit, I turned on the arachnophobia mode, which turns them into these creepy cat heads, which I think we can all agree is a little worse than just spiders. Anyway, we'll just take care of them in short order. No big deal. Oh, you want some too, do well, you? you? Let's get this it? nightmare over with. Okay, where was I? Putting down our beautiful mining drill, that's what. Never has anything in a cave looked so majestic. So right now, this thing doesn't have any power, yeah, which honestly is for like the better. That. Because if this thing is pulling out uranium while we have it set up, we're just going to be taking on lots of radiation. Oh, did I mention to find this, I had to go through a waterfall? It's true. I wandered around for like an hour before I figured out it's back here. Okay, finally okay. ran the conveyor belt all the way home. We're going to stage our uranium over here. You may recognize this little place over here. In a previous video, this is where I had all of my trucks. You know, the ones that turned into ascension species. And then I had to put them down, otherwise the game would never run again. So we're gonna stage everything here because we can't just send the uranium over raw. We gotta make two things first. Uranium cells and electromagnetic control rods. Uranium cells are the uranium itself as well as concrete and the electromagnetic rods are staters and AI limiters. Easy enough. Let's make a couple assemblers. We'll just place one here and also just kind of over there. We're also gonna send our uranium into this guy over here. Which by the way we haven't connected the power to that thing yet so let's do that now. Okay here we go. So now that we've connected the power I'll we have to do is wait for the drill to do its thing and bring the uranium to us. While we wait, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video, and that would be NordVPN. I don't get a chance to talk about this very much in my videos, but I actually take online privacy extremely seriously. And as part of my arsenal of things I do to stay safe online, I've always used a VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. Think of it as like a hazmat suit for your data. And in this case, that hazmat suit allows you to stay anonymous online, encrypts your data, and keeps your location private. NordVPN also has, at the time of this video, over 5,000 servers located across 59 countries, and they're adding more servers all the time. They also have Android and iOS apps, so you can use it on your mobile devices as well. So if you want to join me in protecting yourselves online, head on over to nordvpn.com slash game it out, or use the link in the description, and you can get 70% off a three-year plan. And if you use game it out at checkout, not only does it help them know I sent you there, you'll also get an additional month free. So again, that's NordVPN.com slash Game It Out. And don't forget to use Game It Out at checkout to get that extra off. free month. NordVPN, thanks again. 70% off three years? That's that's a huge discount. That's huge. Three years worth of 70% off. 
and for sponsoring me. And there it is. For the record, it took about four minutes. And it still hurts to get in here, right? Oh boy, does it ever. It's kind of a shame. It's so pretty to look at. It's like a bunch of... Like, I, I thought it was just going to be a normal ass uh, sponsorship, you know? But three years, 70% off, that's huge. Normally, a sponsor is like one month for like, I don't know, 10% off or something like that. 70% off for three years? That's insane. Slimers just on a conveyor belt. So this guy over here is going to be for our uranium cells. The uranium we obviously have. And right in front of us at the center of our base is some concrete. Okay, and there's the concrete. As I slowly die to radiation poisoning. Now this thing's doing the magic of making uranium cells. And for our control rods, gotta grab them stators and AI limiters. Alright, AI limiters for days. And these are the stators. Thankfully, I have pretty much all of these materials being built somewhere in my base. And I just need to find them and route them over here. Now that those two things are underway, we have to turn to our old friend the manufacturer which we're gonna build down here for kind of no reason and in this thing we're gonna build you know he's already shown us how to build stuff in the sky for my uranium i'm probably not gonna be routing that through my world and instead i'm gonna be routing it in the air uh unless you can get radiation from going underneath it like there's no hitbox type thing. Hmm. We'll see how it goes. Nuclear fuel rods, which is what can finally go inside the nuclear reactors. My favorite part about this? Very radioactive. That's what I like to hear. First, we'll send these uranium cells down there. Okay, that's one down and two down. So that connects our two nuclear things. To finish off the trifecta, we just need to get ourselves some of these encased industrial beams, which I just happen to know where there's a lot of them. It's like all the stuff I built previously was all building up to this. Also known as, thank God my production is so imbalanced, I just have extra random crap everywhere. See, if we can't work quickly here, I seem to be taking on a not insignificant amount of radiation poisoning. And there we go. And we'll just send these beauties right over there. And since I've already got my medical inhaler out, this calls for a celebration puff. I wanted to have extra crap everywhere, so I put splitters going off into storage containers. So even though it's still producing, it's still got a stockpile being put into the uh, storage container. Puff. Uh, now that I've taken on 10 generations worth of radiation sickness, I'm just gonna stare off into space for a bit and let my empire just grow. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape now. So many beautiful fuel rods. Now comes the fun part, where I route fuel rods all over the map and wonder if I'm gonna melt my face off. Almost there. Ah, finally, after all that, the fuel rods are in the thingamajig. The machine looks to be working, and boy is it a thing of beauty. Now the only thing left to do is hook it up to power. I thought that'd be more exciting. Ooh, but that smoke is. My god, look at that jump. Our capacity for power was 4,400, and then we brought the power plant online, and now it's 6,900. He's got so much power. I think I got, like, 800 in order to serve. That is quite the leap. So here's the other thing that happens with nuclear power. We get delicious, beautiful waste. Extremely radioactive. And what are we going to do with that nuclear waste? Well, build a bunch of conveyor belts that zigzags it through this waterfall, of course. And I'm using the slow conveyor belts because I want all that radiation goodness to get all in the water supply. And then once its slow journey is complete, all that tasty waste goes into this bin for future generations to worry about. Okay, first nuclear power plant done. And while I'm <laughs> satisfied, we could get that first one off the ground. I feel like there's so much more we could be doing. Huh, this gives me an idea. I can't help but think being able to look at the cocoon again is a blessing in disguise. So for the first time in a long time, we're going back in. It's been so long oh, since I was able to climb in this thing. Here we are in the belly of the beast. These, of course, being our three oil refineries. I'm tempted to go back and change all of these Mark 1 conveyor belts to Mark 5, but even I hurt imagining how long that would take. We're now here at the halfway point. You can tell because the iron rods stop and the oil begins, so I don't don't actually think there's an opening. I think I have to make one to get out. Nope, wait, found my opening. I'll just fly my way up there. Hopefully I don't run out of fuel for my jetpack. It's a long way down. Ah, and here we are at the very top. I know I've said it a couple of times, but I cannot stress how bizarre it is to be able to look at this thing and the frame rate may- Oh, that's another reason why he's got so much power is the oil. I'm still using uh, coal. 
maintains. Look at the dumpster that is my factory setup. God. <laughs> like, at this point, even I can't tell what goes where. So I keep forgetting that there's, like, stairs and walkways. And it would be really useful because we do need to find a way to get up there fast. But no one likes taking stairs. So I found a better way to get up there. It's called a bunch of bounce pads all over the place. Here, let me show you what I mean. It starts with this bounce pad right over here. So we just jump on this conveyor belt, which will launch us in at the right angle. It'll take us over to this bad boy, and it'll just start bouncing us all the way up to the top. And the nice thing is it's all set up so I don't have to do anything, and I can just bask and look at our factories, really just enjoy the ride. Oh, sh**. I'm not even moving anything. It's just bouncing me for me. So I can just look around so, at the nice surroundings, really work. take in all the beautiful scenery. Are you f***ing serious? Or I can just hold on for dear life and hope the whole thing works. Honestly, it works about 10% of the time. It's the best. But it gets you close to the top of the cocoon, so beggars can't be choosers. Oh, here we are coming in for a landing. Bounce off this backboard. Here comes the final bounce. I can't think of a better way to get to the top of this spiral. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, what's the plan? I mean, if you look out there, you can already see our nuclear power plant dumping nuclear waste down below. So here's what we're gonna do. I know this seems like sacrilege, but we're gonna cut the head off of the beast. And I know oh, no. it seems scary, but I promise you there's a reason for everything. Remember how the top of this thing because of the red tint looked kind of like a warhead? Well, now we're really putting that nuclear touch on the top of it. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's looking better. It's got that kind of gaudy Vegas quality to it. Also, why is my nuclear reactor already showing signs of wear and tear? I haven't even hooked it up yet. And of course, we want it to look classy, right? Like, look at all the crap already floating around this thing. That majestic crown up there deserves the finest curb appeal. So first, let's make sure to loop this stuff through everything. So that that everything is nicely irradiated. Okay, yeah, this'll do. B plus at best. So we're gonna take these fuel rods and we're gonna feed them in through the bottom of the cocoon. That way the entire thing can maintain its visual splendor. Okay, there we go. Everything is properly irradiated. Now all we need to do is connect it to the power grid. Thankfully, because of the bounce pads floating in the air over here, there's already a bunch of power lines just ready for me to connect to. God, look at that burst in power right there. Now we gotta deal with my favorite thing, nuclear waste. The waste is all gonna come out of right here and as is my cu <coughs> custom we're only gonna use the finest slowest belts we can now all we need to do is just run this belt full of byproduct goodness all the way down to the edge of these barrels and just to make it a tad more convenient I'm gonna send the nuclear waste down in one of these splitters using the power of conveyor lift technology thank God these things can just keep going lower and lower and lower Look at that. you can just have it hand delivered right to the ground you know what I think I'm gonna do with all this nuclear stuff I'm just gonna add a merger to where these iron rods are coming out. And I'm just gonna mix these in with the iron rods. Oh yeah, I'm sure this won't be a problem at all. <laughs> well, there it goes. Join your friends. No. So with two power plants, I still feel like we're not producing any nuclear waste. Ah, uh, much better. better. There's like 50 power, power plants back there. Uh, but this actually poses a new problem. While our power capacity is amazing, our consumption is, uh, conservative at best. In order for these things to start chewing through those fuel rods, we actually have to get our power consumption up, otherwise they're just gonna sit here idly. Which is great if you're trying to build an efficient factory. It's not so great if you want your main export to be nuclear waste. And God, do we want more of these barrels. And to do that, we're gonna turn to our old friend, train technology. And the reason for that is because trains generate electricity, and I can set them to go forever. So test one. One station here, and another station here. Let's put a train down and do a quick test. As you can see, firing this thing up, it goes around and around and around, generating not nearly as much as I would like, but hey, it's generating something. Something else interesting we can do is we can connect trains together, and while each train in and of itself doesn't take up more power to function like this, they all have to fire up their engines to move. That's a nice little power push for not doing a whole lot, and I'll know this power output matters. If I see barrels piling up here, I know it's working. Now I'm interested to see if we can generate some power faster. Test number two. In which case we see if adding some rails that go up increases how much power it takes. And then also I gave it a little more distance, mostly because I don't know how to use train tracks very well. Let's play conductor and see how it goes. So as always when you first start it out, it does take a lot of power. Downhill does a little bit less for the power. Once the train gets moving, it takes up less because it's already got that speed going. So here's my current running theory. Maximum trains combined with maximum train stations means tons of stopping and starting, meaning tons of power generated. You know, I have an idea how we can test this, but I gotta build something real fast. So hang on, it'll just take a second. The freight cars cost more, because it would add more weight to the car, more wind resistance. And every, Well, I'm trying to think like real life right now. If you were to add multiple cars to the back of that, since they're not powered, it would still make the thing use more electricity, because it, it's 
slugging down. You'd also have wind resistance and all that. That that uses fuel consumption pretty heavy. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that driving with your windows down will actually use more gas than driving with your windows up. Okay, here's test number whatever this is. I sure hope it goes okay. It's essentially one gigantic loop that goes through all of these tracks. It's not particularly pretty or elegant. Hey, the whole point is just to generate electricity. Okay, now we've added the trains. In case you're curious, Sorry this is that. 188. Well, it was opening the soda, I didn't expect it to be all loud. Trains, all connected together, taking up the entire track start to finish. And it's all automated, so the trains will just oh, loop through this disaster one. forever. There are 23 total stations they go through, aptly named Hulp, before looping back around. <laughs> you know what pains me most about this? It's not that it's actually semi-orderly, although that also pains me. It's how freaking slow everything's going. I didn't realize that would be the thing that drives me nuts. But enough talk, how's it doing for our power? At an idle state, about 6,000, not too bad. When the trains start up again, it hits a nice healthy 12,000. That's still a far cry from maxing out our potential with 100,000. But before I go nuts and start laying out more track, let's at least see if we're exporting any of the good like stuff that. now. And by that, of course, I mean nuclear waste. No, yeah, yeah, this'll do. This'll do nicely. Waste. That's a lot of barrels. I think this is working out quite well. So normally the goal would be to try to figure out where to put this stuff so it doesn't do any harm. But why would you want to hide something so majestic? Now me, I look at my base and I see something that's missing. And I think this has a chance to be a real showpiece. Once again, I'll be back in a hot minute. Well, that's looking just swell. Oh, oh yeah, no. feels good. This is looking great. So one might look at this and get the impression that I covered the entirety of my base in nuclear waste. And you'd be right. Up to and definitely including the weave. Which, oh, if I no. do say so myself, has never looked better. It's kind of like this is a waste disposal site, except above ground, and advertising its presence. Oh my god, <laughs> the radiation is so bad. If I die and I have to respawn in, I just die instantly. I've oh, made the base man. so hostile I can't even be here anymore. And also, the spaghetti of my base is just completely out of control now. But damn, that nuclear waste looks so vibrant in the Wait, moonlight. So I feel like this is how this base was going to end up. Nuclear waste everywhere. Power plants, as far as the eyes can see. Our conveyor NATO that turned into a conveyor cocoon now has a warhead aiming up to the heavens. And thank God I can use these bounce pads to just bask in it all while I fly off. Oh, and thank my lucky stars, the frame rate's gotten kind of bad again. I'd like to thank NordVPN again for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, if you head on over to NordVPN, com slash game it out you can get 70 percent off their three-year plans 70 percent off three years i'm not trying to help the guy sell it or nothing but i mean that's a good fucking deal don't forget to put in game it out at checkout as well to get another month for free so i think that's gonna do it for this episode hope you had fun i know i did i'm gonna go check and see if i'm growing a third arm from all this radiation and i'll see you next time I really enjoyed this one. Uh, not sure what the hell he's going to do with all that nuclear waste, but I, I like the amount of power that he has. If I had that much power and weight, I, I could build anything I wanted in Satisfactory. That's one thing I, I have is uh, I keep tripping fuel or fuses, keep tripping fuses, and then I have to add more power. Like I'm still running with, what is it, six of the, uh, the biofuel things plus like... I think I got six or seven of the coal generators up and running now. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.